Uh, we wanted to use it to monitor the analog and digital signals off air and in real time correct any time difference there was. We're also able to use that same process to resolve the audio level and phase correction uh, if they happen to be different between the analog and digital signals. It wasn't until we had the tuner in and, and started doing the software that we realized that there was some important other benefits of having the tuner, such as conf confidence monitoring of the audio signals and also looking at the PSD data in both the primary signals and the secondary HD signals. If we take a look at the user interface, uh, one of the first things you'll notice up in the upper right hand corner is the status of the HD receiver. The fact that there's a orange HD logo there that tells me that we're currently receiving HD, it's being decoded by the receiver and uh, HD is on the air. Uh, we also get some other information from the tuner, such as the carrier level and also the carrier to noise uh, ratio of the tuner. In addition to displaying them on the front page, we also have the ability to create histiograms where you can look at the performance of the HD system over a period of time. Um, so not only can you look at it currently, but you can go back several days, weeks, and even months to see what the audio performance was or to try to troubleshoot any problems. Um, say, for example, you were driving into work in the morning and, and you thought you heard the HD drop out. Uh, you didn't know if it was just the location that you were in or if there was something else going on. Well, you could easily go back to one of these histiograms, put in the approximate date and time, and see just exactly if, uh, if the tuner here also experienced the same problem. So it can be a very good tool for troubleshooting. Um, one of the other functions in the GUI is the, the setup of the DTAC, the, uh, the time alignment. Um, up in the upper right hand next to the status of the receiver, you can see what the current delay setting is and also if there's a ramp currently going in or out of that delay, what percentage of the ramp is. In this case here uh, that we're looking at, there's a delay of 7.7 .7 seconds. Um, it's currently detected that delay and it's also matched up the analog and digital to that. So it's 100% it's complete and the automatic correction is currently running. Like the carrier levels, uh, we also keep histograms of this information. So as those corrections occur, whether it be one sample, two samples, uh, you can go back and, and see what that correction looked like over time, um, as well as monitoring the audio levels over time. So again, it's, it's uh, nice troubleshooting tool. Um, if you go in and you see that the corrections are varying a lot, you have a lot of uh, chasing it back and forth, trying to get the right number of samples to correct, that could be an indication of, of poor timing, either a bad GPS signal coming in or a bad 10 megahertz. Um, so it's, it's nice to have that tool there, not just for correcting the audio, but also troubleshooting uh, the system along the way. There are a couple of different ways we can monitor the audio. As I mentioned earlier, there is a headphone jack on the front panel. There's also the ability to hook monitor speakers up to the rear of the unit. Um, if you do that, you have the ability through the headphones or the monitor, not only to monitor what's coming in the box. Uh, these, these top selections are basically what's being presented on those RJ45 connectors on the rear of the box. But I can also listen to the tuner and see what it sounds like on the tuner. So again, it's, it's, it's a really nice troubleshooting tool. If you think you're hearing an artifact, say in your HD2, I can listen to what it sounds like coming right into the back of the box, and then I can listen to what it sounds like coming off air and, and try to troubleshoot that. I can also put the tuner in split mode is what its normal operating mode is, and that's when it does the time 
correction. And I think it puts the uh, analog in the left and the digital in the right, and it tries to correlate those and match those two together. So you can hear what that sounds like um, as it's ramping up to that delay or while it's uh, managing that delay. Another way to look at the audio status is through the uh, audio status page. Here we can look at a number of things. We can see the signal level uh, through the meters and also the buffer level. But we also have the ability to look at the PSD data. We can look at the PSD data that's being presented at the back of the box from the automation system. We can also look at the PSD data that's being captured from the on-air tuner. So currently we're looking at HD2. I can step through HD2, HD3, whatever HD channels I happen to be running, and not only see the audio signal levels, but also see the related HD levels. And as you can see in the lower half of the screen, you can set up alarms uh, accordingly for both the audio and the PSD data. Uh, another thing that's new on the Gen 4 that I'll just cover real quick is the ability to have an audio capture client that's outside the box that allows you to uh, have a station, say, in another market, send a audio capture client, say, through a Windows machine or an IP codec uh, to wherever your importer and exporter is um, so that uh, you can take that, have it encoded at a different location, and send it through the IP address of the other one. So just in summary, the Gen 4 hardware is flexible and simpler to manage than previous generations. The time alignment methods that the FMXI offers is completely agnostic. It will work regardless of the station's STL and system topology. And even if you choose to use other time alignment methods, the tuner can be used for real-time verification of on-air time alignment. The tuner not only guarantees precise time alignment, but can be used as a tool to monitor the HD carrier, the presence of audio, and the pad data. That's all I have for you today. I'm happy to take a few questions. Uh, you can also email me questions uh, to this email address here uh, if you'd like, and I'll be happy to try to get back to you.